Okay, so when we are at this stage where we have our map, ooh, I lost the map. That was awkward. Okay, that's really awkward. I guess I'm going to have to do this again. Let me hit escape from there. Go to GIS. Um, by the way, to do this, you should be in top orthographic, so I should have mentioned that. And I do want to turn on the um, screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing in Blender. However, it appears that screencast keys is not available in Blender, so I have to download it once again, like I did with the Blender GIS uh, download. So there's an article on it in Blender add-ons. And I'm going to go in here, and they find it on GitHub. So it should be here, version 3.0 for Blender 2.8. And there is the zip file. And so I'm going to save the link as a screencast keys and bring it in my downloads folder. And download that. And then I should be able to go back to Blender and, again, go into Preferences and go to add-ons and then I should be able to install and install screencast keys and turn it on and then it should show up. I, I think this will save my preferences automatically. We can quit and don't save this. Let's try it again. Let's get open blender here. <coughs> And let's hit the open this up and look at screencast keys and turn it on. And there, now it's showing up. Okay, so it was just a matter of starting the program up again. But you see in yellow down here, when I use my mouse wheel, it says what it's doing. So you can follow what I'm doing around. If I left mouse, right mouse, if I right click on this, and if I use my middle mouse, you're seeing all that there. And I can make it a little bigger. There, now you can really see what I'm doing. And so anytime I click or do anything, you will be able to see what I'm doing. So that's a handy add-on to have, screencast keys. So once again, let's go and do our GIS map again. So I'm going to go. I don't want this cube. I don't think I need it. So I'll hit X and delete it. I'm going to hit 7 on the number key. Number pad, top orthographic, five would be perspective, but top orthographic is what you want, so everything is sort of aligned. I really don't need a light for what I'm doing, so I'm going to leave it in there. Why not? Um, and the camera, I'm going to leave it in there for now. Um, so now what I'm going to do is go up to my GIS, go to my web geodata, my base map is Google Satellite, say OK, and it comes up there. I hit G. Now, that screencast key didn't show up, and it doesn't show up for some reason. Uh, so I just know that I hit the G key to get the go-to thing. And I'm going to put in the address. Uh, I can put in either Rosebud or, in this case, 22843 Hale Road, Land O Lakes. And that's in Florida, but it should know that. And I'll make my zoom level approximately... That 20 is OK. And say OK. And it's going to calculate and get right in there. And then I use my scroll wheel to get to this site at the level that I want to. Now, I don't need to do all of the lake. What I really want to focus on on the Rosebud property is <clears throat> the area from the road and <clears throat> up to where the RV is. Now we know that this entrance here goes around the back and somewhere our, our RV is about up in here. There's somebody else's house there, so we don't need that. So we can move that house back and get to Hill Road and fit okay. most of the stuff that we want in there and get Collier Parkway and a bit of the lake and get the driveway. So that's what we're going to use as our reference. So I'm going to hit the E key. Again, screencast keys won't show manipulations in Blender GIS. E key will export this into an image, as you can see. And then that is the image that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. 
and save it as in my let's see in my T data envisioning sustainability tutorials and this blend will be called rosebud for all space VR that's the rosebud we're going to create so save that in there okay and <laughs> now that I have that saved in there that map there's other things I can do with it so I go to GIS again and I say in here um, get OSM, which is OpenStreetMap, and I'm going to ask here for buildings and see if I can get the house, if there's any data there for the house, and I'm going to make them separate objects, and I'm going to say OK, and there it is. It pulled in the house. Whoa, but it's not on the map, so don't move the map around, Control Z. Um, but the house is there, and it's pretty darn tall. So maybe that was too tall. So, whoa, I got rid of that, and I shouldn't have. Is there a redo button on here? Yes, there is. Okay, so maybe, maybe, maybe that's not the best thing to have. There's separate buildings there because they're too tall. So I'm going to delete each of them and try to do that again by selecting this, going to GIS, going to Web Geodata, go to OpenStreetMap, get buildings, but I'm not going to make the default height um, that, get the elevation from the object. Oh, and there's one more thing before we actually do this. Let me pause for a second here. We should get the digital elevation, the SRTM, because that gives us the, the height of the terrain. So when I bring that in, you can see that it has made it so that the lake is obviously deeper than the rest of the terrain. It's not, it's blocky, but that's the satellite imagery that shows how deep things are. So that's a nice thing to have. And now that we've got that, I'm going to go in uh, to my GIS and my get OSM or open street map and get the building. I'm going to get the elevation from the object and I'm going to <clears throat> use as the elevation of the object, the satellite map, so that it actually sits on that warpy landscape properly. But 20, whatever 20 is here, is way too tall. Um, so I'm going to make the assigned height, uh, I'm going to make it 5 and see what that does. Now, yeah, the buildings are a bit smaller and they're sitting on the landscape properly, although they did get off kilter when we did that. And if I just select the buildings, I now have to move them back onto where they belong. Same thing with this little one. It should have been on top of there. So I don't know. It seems like the elevation thing messed it up a little bit, but now it's on the map. And that's the only buildings that came in. All righty. <clears throat> but those are good for some reference, and that's what we need to do is to start making references for the property so that we can later on bring in um, other objects. And with those references, <clears throat> we also want to make build up references for the um, other objects in here, like the greenhouse or the basketball courts or the bees. <laughs> so what I'll do here is I'll go to add and I'll go to Mesh, and I'll go to Create a, I could do a plane, but I find a cube actually works better. And there's my cube. So if I take a cube and I put it here, and then I, uh, you hit the period key to zoom in on it, and that cube, you can see, whoopsie, let me go back to there. If I, oh. Well, there's the terrain. There we go. So that cube is hanging out underneath here where it shouldn't be. So I'm going to hit the G key and the Z key to move it up the Z axis and lift it up on the plane. And then uh, you can also hit the one key to get to a level. A couple of things that you'll notice about this 
is it's not exactly on the zero part of the plane, but that's the way it came in. And it may be worthwhile, actually it is worthwhile at this point, to hit uh, no, to select all, which is by hitting A. That's everything. Go into the front orthographic look and then hit G and Z and move everything down so that you have a ground level on that red line, the x-axis. So now that I have this cube um, here, I can take this cube and I can make it very thin. I don't want a plane, but I want something that's a very thin cube. So I'm just going to select just that cube. There's the name of it over here. And I'm going to scale it down in Z. And let me zoom in on it by hitting the period key. Oops, I should, should have done it. No, it didn't do it. Why? Weird. But there it is, a very thin cube, although it's lost in this weird perspective thing. So here's what happens if you lose things because of perspective when you're working with a big landscape like this. You need to go to the camera icon, which in this version of the software, let's see if we can go to view. Yeah, go to view, and then you should see a clip start, and you need to bring that clip start down to, like, one meter. And then the end can be very high, and now when you go in, it doesn't clip like that. So that clipping problem is gone. That was in the view area clip set. Otherwise, if the clipping is too high, as you can see, well, you can't see it. I use that to save memory. That's the reason that they have this clipping feature. But whatever you set it at, set really low, you know, about a meter or so. And then um, you can zoom right in on that. And then we can make it, uh, by hitting S for scale in Z, the Z axis, we can make it a very thin plane, which we can use for some ground features that we want. And the other thing is then to drop it down by hitting G in Z and move it down to the point where it just about disappears. That means you're on the ground if it's touching like that. The ground's a bit uneven. Then you go to your top view and you move it and you rotate it with R and make it rotate to what the landscape looks like. And now you can scale, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> you can scale out. Uh, this is probably better done in edit mode because if you hit the S key and you scale in, say, the X axis, then you're scaling uniformly and you can't really see it and then you'd have to shift it. And you could scale it like this and then you could hit G and you could keep moving it and then you could hit S and X and keep trying to scale it. It's a bit awkward doing it like that. So if, on the other hand, you hit the tab key, which goes into the edit mode, and then you hit, um, did it go into the edit mode? It should have gone into the edit mode. Tab is, yes, ah, now, it says edit mode. See up here on the left side top, object mode, edit mode, I think tab. So if you go there, then you see these vertices, and what you'll do is use the B key to get the bounding box and grab over and make sure you've got all of those because you might just get the top vertices. Um, and then you can hit, ah, and sometimes it won't work. It'll just give you the top one. So here's a trick. Hit Z to make it transparent and then hit the B key and select. And you should have selected all the vertices on there. And you can uh, get out of Z to get back from wireframe into solid. And now when you hit the G key, you can extend it out to the edge there and then hit A to select everything and then away from it to deselect. Once again, hit the Z key, go into wireframe, select those other two vertices, hit Z again and go back to solid and then hit the G key and you can extend it out like that. Now you want to click away from it to deselect. 
Then again, go to wireframe, select these, and hit B again and select these. Now you've selected all the vertices on the bottom. Go out of wireframe. And now you can hit G and pull it down to the bottom of the basketball court. And then when you hit tab to go into object, you will see you've got an object that is the size of that basketball court. Now that I have this object, I can use it to map out the locations of the other objects by hitting Shift D to duplicate it and put it, for example, here on the uh, before I do that, when I do it, hit G and constrain yourself to another single axis. So you don't accidentally lift it up in the Z axis. Thinking in 3D is all kind of weird. And now I can take that, and since this um, volleyball court's a bit bigger, as you can see, I can move this up to there. But now I want to go hit Tab, and I want to deselect, and I want to make sure I go into Wireframe and select the vertices on the bottom. Oops, there we go. Now they're all selected. And now I want to get out of wireframe, go back to solid, hit G and pull it down to cover that. And now hit tab and it's an object, as you can see. But you can see now that it's, uh, because the landscape has got contours, this is kind of weird, isn't it? So go back into your orthographic view. Uh, well, you can do it in any kind of view you want to. Um, because we want to try to take it and make sure, hitting the rotate key, that we rotate it properly to make it flat. Um, or you can just leave it like that. It looks like what's happening is that the land in this is sloping down unrealistically low. That doesn't happen in the real world at Rosebud, it's not that big, is it? So there is a problem with the terrain because it's looking like there's actual mountains, like you would fall off the edge of the uh, of the terrain, and and that's not really happening in the real world there. So these contours are way too large. <clears throat> what to do about that? Well, if we find the map itself and we look in the modifier properties, you will see that it has a digital elevation model or DEM modifier and another one. They haven't been applied yet. And you can also see, looking at it, that it has a strength. And if I grab the strength, you can see I can make it really high and really low, which is kind of crazy. If I go like that, then the mountains are huge. Look at that. It's like there's canyons all over. Florida does not look like that. That's a strength of 1.9. Look what happens if I do this. Like, wow, they're massive canyons. And then you definitely fall to your death if you were playing basketball and you ran over to make a basket and then you, wow, you fall down there. So that is unrealistic. That is not Florida. And the lake, of course, then it becomes super deep under there. It's only 10 feet deep because we scuba dived in that lake, me and a student. Um, and we found that it was not more than 10 feet deep. So this is like it's like the ocean or something. All right, so that's all wrong. So what do we do about that? Let's go to our strength. It was defaulting at one, and that was still too much, as you can see, right? Because it doesn't have that big a slope going down there. So we can take it down, and let's try something like, let's see what 0.5 looks like. 0.5. Of course, not all the buildings are flying up in the air, so we'll have to move move it up. Um, but 0.5, if you look at it, is that a gentle kind of slope? It's still a bit harsh. All I'm really interested in for this Florida model is I'm interested in that the lake is a bit deeper down than the rest of it. Um, so maybe I'll even go down to, say, 0.3. Point Three. Try that. It's much flatter. There is a bit of a slope down there to where the lake is. So I can, yeah, I'm going to go with that. So it just has this, a little bit of contour to it, but not a lot. And then with this terrain, 
I'm going to move it back up G and Z up to that red line, which is the zero line there, so my reference point. And then the buildings sit properly again. And the, yeah, a little plane there, although because of these contours, it looks like this is sort of floating up in the air a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely floating up in the air. So put G and Z and move it down until it just before it disappears. So that we have that port. And then this one here is okay, I guess. Not still floating in the horizon. So G and Z and bring it down so it just kind of touches there. So now you've got those. I mean, I guess we can move this down a little bit more. No. It's kind of tricky there. All right. <clears throat> so now the next thing I'll do is I will get my orthogonal view. I'll take one of these again. Oh, and I didn't name them. So this cube should be now called over here on the right side should be called basketball court. And this cube here, which needs to be moved over a little bit. Whoopsie. Oh, I'm only getting ahead. That one needs to be moved out a little bit. All right, that cube 0 0.001 is now called volley ball court. And of course, this one here that came in, it has a number, but actually it should be called um, house. And then the one here that came in from OpenStreetMap can be called uh, classroom. Okay, and then this one here, this building, who are you, this building? Don't know. Oh, that's the, actually that building is, yeah, just, it's just a name. For, they have different names for uh, the actual models that are in there. All right, anyway, there's a building inside that. It's a mesh, and then inside that is classroom, which gets picked, and then the house. I don't know if we can change the name of this ID data unlock rename. Yeah, we can. So house. Oops. I must take there. ID data rename house. And the same thing here. Go to ID data and rename. This classroom, right? Because they're at the top of the hierarchy. Okay, um, that came from the OpenStreetMap, as you can see. And the whole thing is the uh, is the building data. Um, so it's sort of nested in there from what came in from OpenStreetMap. All right, um, <clears throat> lights the volleyball court. Okay, so. There's those things. Now, we do have the beehives over here, so I'm going to hit Shift-D again on this, bring it up here, hit R, rotate in the Z-axis, and uh, move it over here, do my rotation again, try to get it positioned. And now here I'm comfortable just sort of scaling it down with the S key and then using the G key to move it over so I have the approximate position. And I will now call that instead of basketball court, Point zero zero one. I'll rename this one. If it'll let me rename it, will it not let me rename it? Hmm. Unlink. I guess I can unlink it. What does that do? Oop, didn't do anything. Shouldn't have done that. Basketball court. We have this, we have this, we don't have anything there. So I'll try it again. I'll make the basketball court. I'll hit Shift D. There it is, the number one. I should be able to. Huh. I'll, hit, I'll delete it. It's odd because I was able to do it for the basketball court and the volleyball court. Maybe I'll take the volleyball court now and see if I can hit Shift D on that. And can I rename that? Well, heavens to Betsy. What about the cube? Can I rename the cube? Yes, I can rename the cube. Although somehow it went into edit mode, which is weird. I'll go back into object mode. 
but the object mode doesn't let me rename. Whereas if I use edit mode, then I can't unless I go into the cube that's in there, which I can rename, and I can call this beehive. Well, if you're having these problems like I am, then it is possible that what we can do is just recreate. Sometimes it's not working to make that. Um, so I will come in here and I will add, let me show you another way of doing it. You can add a plane and then you can give the plane dimension. So we can take the plane and edit it and scale it. But again, come in and maybe it's better to do it this way because this way you don't have to keep hitting Z and transparency. The reason for going into the wireframe mode was that if you have vertices that are hidden under these vertices somewhere in a three-dimensional object, you might only get just the top ones when you are trying to select them and you're doing it as a solid because you can't see what's underneath. It's like an x-ray when you get into wireframe mode. But since there's only two dimensions for this, if I select these two now, there's only these two vertices. So I can grab them and, and move them out. Although I should, of course, let me go back on that. I should, before I do anything, I should rotate this to the right way. And I should move it up so that I can work with it because things are not exactly flat in this world. As you can see here, I also will probably need to rotate this in the y-axis to get it sort of flattened to the unflat earth. Reality is inconvenient, as you can see. And now move this down, there we go. And now that I've got it on the ground, go back into my top orthogonal view and deselect now grab these two vertices, hit G and stretch them out to there, and then deselect and hit these two and move them up to there, and then right-click away to deselect, collect it there, and move these down to there, and deselect, grab these two and move them over to where the end of the beehive is, real world. Now that we have that, I select everything, and I come up here and I hit E for extrude, and I can build a cube this way. So I can hit E and make a very thin walled plane for the beehive. So then hit tab, and I've got the object, and now I can name that plane. It's not letting me name anything. Well, that is the weirdest thing. Uh, somehow, because it got moved into into, uh, into that hierarchy. So let me see if I can move it up somewhere. And now, unlink. And it went away. Very strange. I can't rename. Yes, I can, by double-clicking on it. Stranger than fiction. Okay, so I'm going to call this Beehive. Okay, okay and... So this gives us the relative position of the beehive. And um, of course, we want to do that for each of the areas that we are concerned with developing when we get into Unity. So for example, the chicken hive, uh, chicken hive, <laughs> the chicken coop over here, we can do the same thing with. And we will, <clears throat> we will go to add mesh plane. I think that's the better way to do it. Take the plane, drag it over, and place it. Once again, find the, uh, the height, G, Z, bring it down till just when it just appears, so it's just touching the landscape. Go back into the orthogonal, and you can do a scale, once again, as I mentioned, uh, without going into edit, but if you want to be more specific, then you'll go into edit. If you don't, you go and just stretch it out and do an approximation. And they can be approximations, of course. You don't need to uh, to make things absolutely perfect. 
And with that plane, now we can do the extrusion by going into Edit and extrude in the z-axis. Of course, it helps if you're looking at it like this when you do your extrusion. You hit X, and then you can make it whatever height you think the chicken coop should be, or the placeholder for the chicken coop, because these will all be placeholders for now, and then you can model the actual objects. <clears throat> hit Tab to get out of Edit. Similarly, for the greenhouse, we will come over here and <coughs> the biodigesters. Well, actually, we'll do the greenhouse, then we'll do the biodigesters. So once again, uh, oops, I didn't rename that plane, did I? So it doesn't have a rename function. It looks like when you double click on it, you can do it. Chicken coop. All right. And now uh, for the greenhouse. We go and we'll add a plane, move it down, maybe move it to the center here, scale it, and scale it in, scale it in, oops, I flipped that over, so not scale it, so you can do rough scaling in this, and now um, you can go into edit to make your scales more exact and uh, come out there click off it click here scale this out oops don't want to do that I want to do G in X yeah covering the the greenhouse and then oops I didn't mean to do that and then go back to tab, make sure that it's on the landscape, right? So there it is. And now go into edit and select the whole thing and do your extrusion. Now, in this case, if you actually wanted to build a greenhouse, there's things you could do. Like notice that I've only got the top selected, the top vertices. So I could come in here. And I could do a subdivision with a knife or a loop cut. Um, if I do a loop cut and I do it like this, then the whole thing gets cut in half, the whole mesh. And then um, now that I've done that, I could deselect, just select, oops, let me get out of the loop cut, don't need that anymore. I can get this vertex and this vertex, and I can grow that up. And that does not look like a greenhouse yet because it hasn't got any curvature, but it gives the approximation. So we can start with that. So I can do that by doing G and Z and then lift it straight up just to give us some better sort of look for it. And of course, you can keep doing this, I should mention, because if I click off of this and I go back to my loop cut, and I go like this, and I do another loop cut on the other side, and I go like this. Now I have the ability to select these top vertices and go G and Z, and I can begin to approximate a curve. So if I click this vertex, and click this vertex, and G and Z, so I'm getting more and more toward an actual greenhouse. So ain't that fun? So you can start your modeling if you wanted to and then bring those models into Unity. I don't know if I got the height right. I probably did not, but uh, that's one way to start doing it. <clears throat> of course, the biodigesters are critical for us in this, and <clears throat> those locations, uh, what we would add for that is we would add a cylinder. So we go to Add, and we go to Mesh, and we go to a cylinder and try to find where that cylinder went. I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to take that cylinder and rename it. Oops. This is going to be bio. Oh, it didn't work. Something weird went on. Bio digester one. And find that, which is down there. Move it up. To where the biodigester belongs, which is here, and zoom in, 
And yes, that looks like that's where the biodigester belongs. Don't need to do that. Okay. And that cylinder's a bit way too tall. So here's where I go S and Z to scale and scale it down. G and Z, move it up on the landscape, and that'll be our biodigester that's there. Then we have a second one, which is the wishing well. And the wishing well biodigester, I hit Shift D and move it over G in X, move it over next to it to where the wishing well is, which is approximately here. And then I can make that biodigester, double click on it and say biodigester two. And then I can shift D to select that, hit G and X, move that over to where the third biodigester is. And double click on that and make that bio digester three. <coughs> and of course, in this case, that biodigester is moved all the way buried below the ground. This one is half buried and the other one is full on. So we are not modeling the digester yet, certainly, but it's again a placeholder for them. And this was supposed to be called not a plane, but because we changed it, it is now the green house. I think you can get the idea now though that how you start creating objects in their right location. I think the last thing to do in here is to create the goat shed. And to do that, we would again put in a plane and move that plane over to the middle of the goat shed, scale it with S, scale it up, and it's a pretty good fit as it is. Move it in G just a little bit over, and then as we did, we can, oops, of course, name it, double click on it, name it goat, uh, goat area, I guess. And then with the goat area, take that plane and hit tab to get into edit mode. You can't see it really well, but select ooh, select the whole thing. And I guess it's sort of hidden because it's underneath the ground. So let me go GZ and lift it up. There we go. So make that goat area just appear there. And um, then hit extrude in Z and give it a bit of depth, if you like. And make sure that we also, ooh, that we get back into tab and the object mode and bring it down so that it is not interfering with the, the run there. So that gives us a marker. The other thing to mark is where is the road and the lake. So here as well, um, what you can do is click off of that. And click off of that. So you've got a contour of the lake and what we can do is do the same thing with the plane. We can add mesh plane or we can add a circle. But I think, I think we're going to go for the plane. They're pretty easy to use. Come in the plane, scale the plane way up like this. And then when we go into edit, we can grab this point and place it there on the lake. Grab this point and move it down here in the lake. Grab this point and move it, although I seem to be moving it in the wrong plane, move it in, uh, in X a bit and then move it in Y to bring it down. Sometimes dragging in 3D gets weird. Move this one in x over so that we have the edge of our map but now what we can do is to add a point in here by um by uh well, this time we can use the 
the knife tool. There's also this tool here. I don't know what that does. Um, so you use the knife tool and uh, come in here and cut that and cut that. And then you have, oops, should have done something, hit enter. Now you've, you've cut it and you've made some points. And so you just take your knife tool and draw it across and then hit enter. And you start cutting up the mesh so that you can work with it. So I'm cutting the mesh, taking the knife, cutting the mesh, taking the knife, cutting the mesh, taking the knife. And then I can go back to my selection tool and grab these vertices and move them. Weird what it did there. But uh, some like broken lines there, which is very strange. I'm not sure what what happened there. Yeah, it's getting all weird. So maybe that's not the best way to do it with the knife tool. So I'll get back out of that. And let's do our loop slide and cut tool. It seems to be a little better. And uh, then see what happens when we pull that. Oh, it's you know it's pulling into different dimensions. So make sure that you use the X and the Y. Maybe what it did is it. Let's see what it did. Go G and Y and bring it up. That seems to be a little better. Bring that up. Bring that up, and you can divide as much as you want. Oh, that one got completely detached. So there are some problems here. Maybe we should try one more time to do a loop slide and cut. Make another vertex group there. And yeah, I'm going to stretch that down here. I think we're going to have to put in another cut in here somewhere and oops and move that so you can get some approximations of where the lake is and make that a plane which you can call lake and the other place that I wanted to make some indications so we know where things are is to get a bit of road in there. So we have our approximate distances. So what you're really doing is laying things out. So once more, add a plane and move it about to the entrance and scale it and then scale it in X and take that segment of road and then I'm going to make sure it's in the right place. It's floating right now so I'll move it down so that the road is just there. Then I'm going to duplicate that and um, I'm going to rotate it in the z-axis and I'm going to move it in X and then move it in Y, and then move it in X again. So I have a bit of the start. I rotate it again. So we sort of get a hint of where the driveway comes in. And uh, looks like that's going to have to be rotated a bit down in the Y, or is it the Z, the X, rotate in X, yeah, because it kind of slopes just a little bit, and then move it down a little bit more, maybe we have to rotate it more in X, and then move it down. So it gives us the start of the road, <clears throat> it's also good for the measurement of the property to Shift D, move this over to here, rotate it in Z, and maybe scale it out in 
X a bit, make the fat erode, and that's going to be Collier. And I can also come into tab it. And here is something interesting. You can grab these vertices and extrude so you can get a bit more of the road out that way. Grab these vertices and extrude. Although I'm extruding in the wrong direction, extrude Y and it goes straight down. And I can then uh, bend it a little bit. And if you want to make this all one road, take these two vertices and extrude them out. Oh, I didn't get any of the plane. Oh, and that got really weird. Look at that. How that road came way up there and it shouldn't have. So there are some weird things of working in this space. I need to bring this down in Z and bring it nice and flat. So, but once again, these are, these are placeholders. So I do need to bring this down now in Z. Oh, it's so weird. It's got like double vertices or something. Stranger than fiction. A lot of playing around, but we're going to do most of this work in Unity. So what we're really just trying to do, as I say, is, is gain placeholders for things. So let me just do one more, one more mesh tab out of that. And uh, actually, I can duplicate that and um, rotate it and move it over here to the other part of the road. Look at how weird that got. And um, rotate it and move it up. And rotate it again like that. Yeah, it's kind of funky. A lot of weird stuff that will happen when you're playing with 3D, like that road is really messed up. So I think I'm just going to abandon that and delete this and try to make this with my own little mesh. Add mesh plane, move that little plane there, bring it down to the bottom. Of the road, move it in my scale it up. Rotate it just a bit, and uh, there it is. And then do my tab. Deselect, select these, extrude, and sort of make my road extrude, extrude, so we get up to that part over there. So it just gives us, again, a bit of an outline. All right. <clears throat> and we have to name these. So this is Hale Road. And this is Collier. And this is, I'm going to actually merge these together if I can with Control J. They become one plane, and I'm going to call this Driveway Entrance. And this was the like. All right. So we have some, some things here to begin to work with. And I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to go into Unity.